All right, distance learning week seven, the final week of the school year. Uh, so here we're going to see how to graph trig functions and how they shift and change as well. Uh, so amplitude, frequency, phase shift, vertical shift, midline are our vocab words that we'll see. So here we have our amplitude and period for both sine and cosine. Uh, they look very, very similar. The big difference is that cosine is basically just shifted over uh, 90 degrees from where sine is. And so they have an amplitude of one, both of them do. They go up to one, that's what that means. And their period is 360 degrees. That means that it starts to repeat after 360 degrees of uh, going left and right. Uh, so that's how that works. And our x values is, are theta instead of x. So that's just going to be the degree or radians if you go radians. So we want to find the amplitude and period of this sine function. We're not going to graph it yet, but we're just going to find the amplitude and period. So the way to tell what happens to these is by... So it's, it's sine of one-third of theta, right? So what's going to happen to this... There's no number out front. That is going to change the amplitude. So that means our amplitude stays 1. The period, however, is going to change. And since it's a 1 third inside, it actually does the opposite. It multiplies it by 3. So the period before was 360. Now it's times 3. And that means it is 1080. And that's it. So we're going to do the same thing for these as we graph them, because we need to know those things in order to be able to graph them. So for 2a, sine of 3 theta, so instead of multiplying by 3, we're going to divide by 3 because it's a whole number, not a fraction. So that means <coughs> that our amplitude stays the same still, still 1, because there's no number out front, but our period is 360 divided by 3 or 120. So now we're ready to graph. So I'm going to keep this as 1 0.5 negative 1 0.5 oh, I did that backwards <laughs> negative 0.5 negative 1 for my y-axis. The x-axis is our theta, it's our degrees. <clears throat> so there's a couple options on how we can do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is just say each one's 90 degrees. So 90, 180, 270, 360. Actually, I want to shift that. Because we have a 120 here instead of 360. So 120 divided by 4, that would be 30. 60, 90. So we're going to skip by 30s. 150, 180. 210 and 240. Don't really care too, too much about the negative side, just for this graph anyway. It is important in general, but we're not going to graph or worry about it. So the way sine works, uh, since it's not being shifted, it starts at the origin. Cosine starts up at 1. And then it goes up, comes back down. Remember our period is 120, so that means it repeats itself at 120. As we go across, so we're going to see two paths of our graph. Two, two repetitions, two periods, that is. So now I'm going to try to draw it. Here we go. And there we go. There's our graph of sine of 3 theta. Now, this could be any graph of sine. I just scaled it to make it work for me, right? So it repeats at 120, but I could have made that 360 just in the 90s. And it would have just been compressed. It's kind of up to you on how you want to do it. I like to scale to make my graphing easier for me. And then just have to keep an eye on what the scale is when you're looking at it for data purposes. Uh, for cosine... So that one starts at above, but this one here has an amplitude change of one half. The period is still 360. So I'm going to keep my y-axis the same. I'm 
And I'm going to change my x-axis, my theta. I'm going to write it down to the bottom. 360, 80, 270, 90. 450, 540, <clears throat> 630, and 720. So again, this one's going to start up at one, but instead, because their amplitude is only one half, it's going to start up at one half. And then it's going to still cross here, back down back up and reach the peak again back at 360. So we're connecting our dots. And there's our sign. I messed up the left side of it actually. Shouldn't be down at negative 0.5, it should be at zero. There we go. Close enough. <laughs> so, the next one human ears can hear sounds with a frequency of 40 hertz. We want to find a period of the function that models the sound waves. So, we also need to come up with what the function is, right? But, um, so that's our second part. So, the first part, the period. So, the thing about this we don't really know about, but period is called T, a capital T in physics, and it is 1 over the frequency. So here we're given our frequency, so our period is 140, 40, 140th. So the amplitude still is 1. So that means nothing's being multiplied outside, but inside of our, it says to make a sine function. So y equals sine of 1 40th theta. Actually, I take that back. So the period in, in this case is equal to 2 pi over the absolute value of b. b is the number that goes inside of our sine function. So that's going to be equal to our 1 40th, or 0 0.025 in decibel, decimal. So the absolute value of b is equal to 2 pi over 0 0.025. And that means that the absolute value of b is equal to about 80 pi. So our function, y equals sine... Theta. So 80 pi theta. So that is our equation. Now we want to graph it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to keep my amplitude, how I've been doing it, 0, 0 0.51, negative 0 0.5, negative 1. And then across the bottom, yeah, that's about the best space I have. So 0. And instead of skipping by Uh, three sixties. Let's get by one fortieths. So we'd have one eightieth here. One one sixtieth here. Three one sixtieths there, and so on. We're just going to repeat at that point. So, um, so graphing this again, sine goes to the origin. It's not shifted or anything yet. We will get to that, and then it's going to go up to one, back down, to the bottom, repeating. 
from there. So again, this graph is going to look exactly like my first graph. The difference here is that I scaled the x-axis to match how we want it. So now we're going to take a look at tangent functions. They're obviously very different. You can see in the image here, they're dramatically different. Their period is only one half. They don't have an amplitude because it just keeps going on forever up and down. Uh, and they're just this little squiggle. So it goes through at the origin, and then it also goes through at 180 and 360, and that's it. So if it changes, it'll be because it's being stretched or compressed or something along those lines, or the period has changed, just like the other ones. So here we have tangent of one half of theta. Again, that one half is going to change what our what it would change what our amplitude is. No, sorry, it does change what our period is. Sorry, thinking backwards. Amplitude still is undefined, but now the period is equal to 180 because that's what it is for tangent times two or 360. So now instead of at every 180, it's going to be at every 360. So I'm not going to change my compression here. So 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, all the way up to 720, 450, 540, 630. So then halfway between our points on the graph, where we have three, is our asymptotes. So straight down at 180, and straight down at 540. So our graph is going to look something like this. Sorry, my dogs are being really bad right now. <laughs> so like that. So our next part is going to look at the other three trig functions. Uh, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are very different. Well, cotangent is pretty much just the uh, flipped vertically version uh, or horizontally, I guess it doesn't matter which way you flip it, uh, of tangent, um, but it also goes through the 90 and 270 points on the uh, theta axis instead. Um, but cosecant and secant are very different. They actually, you can see they have the red dotted line that is going for sine and cosine, but it's just the inverses of those, right? That's why these are the reciprocal functions. It covers the other things that the other ones don't. So, But it crosses at the, the maximum points for the altitude or amplitude of the other ones. So amplitudes here are all undefined. Periods, again, for cosecant and secant, just like sine and cosine, are 360, cotangents 180. So this first one, you want to graph cosecant. And it's 3 cosecant of theta. So now that 3 means that our amplitude is 3. Our period is still 360. That didn't change. So now graphing this at up at 3 and at 360. So this one again, remember, matches up with tangent, or uh, sorry, sine. So that means remember sine, I'm going to draw it on here just for your reference. So this is 0, 90, 180, 360, 450. Oh, I forgot 270. I felt like something was wrong there. 270, 360, 450, 540, 630, and 720. So I'm going to do a dotted line graph so you can see kind of where sine lies. fix these top ones and bottom ones. Amplitude's three. I didn't go high enough up. So 
Now I can do my dark mine. So again, this orange dotted line is sign. All right, so sorry my dog started going crazy there. If you heard any of that. Uh, so cosecant is going to be at these same points, the peaks and the troughs of our graph. But it has asymptotes, one at the y-axis. One at 180, there's a few of these. Every time it crosses the theta axis, there's an asymptote there. So our graph actually does this, just little tiny like U-shaped parabolas over and over again. Like that. So phase shifts now, this is when it starts to shift around. So that means we have an H and we can have a K as well, something being added to the outside. Um, that's not pictured here so much, but that would mean it's shifting up and down. Um, but the H inside is really what's causing a phase shift. And it has to be in degrees, so we know that orth gradients, so that we know it's being shifted how much in that term, so in degrees or in radians, depending on what's our graph in. So this one here has a phase shift of 20. So it says to state what all those th things are. So the amplitude is based off of, again, the number outside, the two. So it means it's one half. So for sine, it's typically 360. So the amplitude here, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not switch, it's multiplying it. So it's two instead of one. Uh, having some brain farts here. Last video, fourth one today. Um, and then our period, that is not, there's nothing being multiplied by theta, so that is just 360 still. And then our phase shift is 20 degrees to the left. So now our sign usually would go through the origin, but now it's going to shift over 20 degrees. So this is a negative 90. So 20 is something like that there. Okay, so I went ahead and labeled everything. So remember, it would cross back through at 180. So that means it's going to actually cross back through at 160. And at 360, or 340 now. So like that. And then instead of being up at 1, it's up at 2. And instead of being up at 2 at 90, it's up at 2 at 70. And at 420, 430, sorry. And then down, I'm not going to do the other one on the left because it's going to be off the graph. Down at 250. And at 610. Here is our graph. A little wonky, but it's good. So now the, the vertical shift part, the K, so this is where it shifts up and down. So this all happens after everything else. So you go ahead and do your shift, you do your do everything else to the graph, and then you shift it up. You don't do that in the middle, or else it's gonna cause some problems. <clears throat> So we want to state the amplitude, vertical shift, and equation of the midline of this one. So 1 half cosine theta plus 3. So that plus 3 is outside of the parentheses with theta, so that means it's shifting up 3. So our period, this is cosine, so it's 360. There's nothing being multiplied by theta, so it's 360 still. 
our amplitude is now one half and our phase shift or our equation of the midline in this case is a horizontal line at y equal to 3 instead of 0 which is usually where it is <clears throat> so this one again is half of what it used to be so let's see and then it's shifted up 3 so instead of being uh, at let's see I'm trying to see where I can label our y or x axis up on top here 180 70, 360, 450, 540, 630, and 720. So 1 half, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, and 3.5. Uh, maybe not like that. We'll do, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero, negative one. All right. So the reason I did that is because it's going to shift up to that three. So it's going to be compressed, but it's not shifting left and right. So instead of being at zero, zero, or at, sorry, zero, one, up at zero four so let me draw where it usually would be so there the orange line is where it usually would be but this one's also compressed by one half, so it's shifted up. And then our amplitude is only one half. So instead of being up at four, it really is going to be, let me do a red one here. That is the new graph after compression. up <laughs> there we go so there and now we shift that up three so from the one half we're gonna be up at three and a half and it doesn't matter so much that you do this in the other order but it doesn't hurt to do it in this order either And there's our graph. So now we have one where we have to do everything going on to it. So this one's going to have an amplitude, a period, a phase shift, and a vertical shift. So we first have to determine what the vertical shift is and the graph, and, the, and then graph the midline. Determine the amplitude, if it exists. Use dashed lines to indicate the maximum and minimum values. And then determine the period of the function and graph the appropriate function. Determine the phase shift and translate the graph accordingly. <clears throat> so here what I'm going to do is figure out all this stuff at once. So our first of all two, our, our angle is in radians now too, so we have to keep that in mind too. Alright, so our, our amplitude still has to do with that number out front. So our amplitude is still 3. Um, and then looking at our period, this is a sine function, but there is a 2 being multiplied inside. So that means that our period is going to be half of that at 180 instead of 360. 
And then we have a shift up four. And then we have a phase shift of pi over two. So that's just 90 degrees to the right. <clears throat> so now sine typically, again, is going through the origin, right? So if it's shifted over 90 degrees, that means it's not at the origin anymore. It's at 90 for that part, right? So first thing we need to look at is the shift up means that our midline is at y equal 4. So that's going to help us in terms of graphing. So that means this line right here, putting a blue dotted line is kind of hard to see, but <clears throat> is our midline. So the amplitude is 3, so that means it's going to go up 3. And then it's also, yeah, it's going to go up 3. So instead of at 0, 90, it's still, still at 0 there. Let me graph it in orange. But now it's up four, right? Um, and actually, it's not zero anymore because it's shifted over 90 degrees. So it's over here at 90. So at 90 degrees, four. And then it is up. So I need to actually label, I'll label them at the bottom. So zero, 90, 180. Same ones we've been doing the whole time here, for most of the time at least. 360, 450, 40, 630, and 720. Some of those are hard to see, but you get the idea. So now, it is being <coughs> stretched basically in the vertical direction by a factor of three, that's the amplitude. And that means that instead of being up at 1 and at 90, it's over at 180 and up at 3, up 3 from there. And then it comes down there. And actually, I take that back. Does. I forgot about the, the period being 180. So that means that it's up halfway between, back down, down at 3, and back up at 270. And then the pattern just continues from there. Now we're pretty much ready to go ahead and connect our points. Being very careful. It's kind of compressed here. If I thought about it, I would have changed my x-axis. It's not as tight, but it's okay. It works. And there you go. That's it. Have a good summer.